This is Mastodon in the Fediverse. My name's Adam Varn. Um, I'm a senior front-end developer at Lullabot. Um, who am I? I'm a senior front-end developer at Lullabot. <laughs> um, I've worked in Drupal since 2009. I ran my own Drupal agency by myself with a couple contractors here and there um, from 2010 to 2021. Um, I love working on accessibility and front-end design challenges, which I would not be talking about at all in this. <laughs> um, I live in Tampa, so I'm about an hour and a half away. Um, I've been a co-organizer of Florida Triple Camp since, um, for the past, this is my fourth year. I got to take part in the, organizing the COVID year, which was fun. Um, actually, fun fact, we were the last in-person camp before COVID and everything shut down, So, because we were in February of 2020. So we were also the first camp back um, after COVID, but yeah, it's a couple years ago. So anyway, thank you for being here. And I've only missed two FLDCs, the first one in 2008, and then the one in 2017, which I mentioned this morning because my daughter was born, so I couldn't um, attend. Um, my handle on Mastodon, if you can see it kind of small, is um, the, the instance, which I'll talk about, is drupal.community and then I'm slash at hot sauce. So, um, this, is, this talk's gonna talk about what the Fediverse is and Mastodon specifically, because it's kind of the most well-known thing. So the Fediverse is a portmanteau of Federation Universe. It's basically an ensemble of social networks, which, independently, uh, which are independently hosted. Um, and they, but they can talk to each other using the standard called ActivityPub, which is adapted by W3C. Um, it's the my, most widely used protocol, the powers of Fediverse. And basically users on different websites can send and receive updates from others across the network. Um, almost all of the platforms are free and open source software. And I'll get to some of these fun little icons in a second. Um, so ActivityPub is a, is a decentralized social networking protocol, like I said, developed by the W3C. And it provides a client-server API for adding, editing, and deleting content, as well as a federated server-to-server -server API. Um, what does all that mean? So federated is a group of servers that share the same um, operating protocol. So standalone. So you can have server um, federated servers, which you know I could have a server, you could have a server, you could have a server, and we can all choose to talk to each other, as opposed to other social media, which is just Facebook has its server, and you connect to Facebook, and you whatever Facebook wants you to see, they they see. With federated servers, the, the individual's controller of the server um, has more control. So that basically leads to, it's an, well, it's an open standard to do this, um, but you can share any sort of information using ActivityPub. Um, so most common is microblogs, photos, music sharing, videos, um, things that all of these servers can, you can run the software on a, on a server and then whatever you post on some of these on, one of, on your server can be shared, if I post a something on Mastodon, it can be shared on PixelFed, which is like an Instagram sort of thing. So you can share, post something in one place and it'll show up on all these other social media networks that are all independently operated. Can, you share, can you share also to Twitter and Facebook? And no, because they have, those are closed protocols, so they don't allow you to share. I, I'll talk about how they're opening some, there's some flexibility to that, but like Facebook, Twitter, they have their own thing. They don't let you post to it. It's all just controlled by them. It's all centralized to them. Instagram is owned by Meta, which is Facebook. Yeah. Um, so it also offers, if you run a server, it gives you greater control over unwanted interactions, trolls, spam, harassers, um, for users and administrators. Because, because you're federated, if you run a server, you can choose who you talk to. And there are lists out there of servers that are just run for spam or um, CSAM, which is child sexual abuse material. Like the, you, anybody can run a server, and people can post these things on there. But you can choose not to talk to that server. So, with, whereas with Twitter, you post something on Twitter, and anybody on Twitter can see you and harass you and post, reply, all sorts of terrible things. With the Federation, you can say, "Nope, I, this server always does this, so I don't want to talk to them." And you never, you don't interact with them, and your users never see it. So you can control who sees what because it's an independent server. Um, and there's yeah, tools like Mastodon, PixelFed, and there is built-in support for Flipboard, which is a long-term um, iOS app and service, which, which like kind of compiles like magazines and news articles. There's like a curated read that you can build for yourself. Um, all interact, use the ActivityPub protocol to publish content to it. Um, Firefox does it as well, and Medium is also getting into it. Um, and there are tools that integrate it directly with WordPress and Drupal. Um, WordPress has removed the share with Twitter button from the core WordPress install and has a share on Mastodon button now because they want to, they, their WordPress is basically really big into the idea of the 
the federation, the, the, the sharing of content that's not controlled by one central service. I keep using Twitter or X as the example, but that's um, probably the most clear example, I think, to a lot of people last year and a half or so. Um, and yeah, there's future integrations planned with um, Tumblr, GitLab, Threads, Flickr, and others. Um, since I've put this together, I did this as an internal company presentation a few months ago. Um, Tumblr has made some progress. I don't know about GitLab. Threads is very, very, very close to being able to, if you're not familiar with Threads, it's um, Meta's attempt to capitalize on, like, it's, it's their version of Twitter they've released, and they have about 150-ish million users on it, which it, it, you basically you can take your Instagram account and connect it to Threads, and you have an instant account. Um, but Threads is, is opening itself up so that it'll be the first Meta product that lets you talk to people on the, using the activity protocol, so on Mastodon, on other services. They'll all be able to connect to them, so you can actually connect to these other people. You can be on Mastodon and do all your own stuff, but you can still interact with someone on threads without having to use all of the privacy things that Meta might be harvesting from you. So it's a way to kind of open up the internet a little bit more. So they're, they're, it's getting there. It should be probably, I would say, hopefully by the end of this year, threads will be there um, to be more open. And Flickr is, I think they're still working on that as well. But there, there's basically, from these established media companies, there is in, in, interest in embracing Activity Pub to reach a wider audience and give people find the control over their own moderation of what they want to see. So, um, I love this from Bluey, <laughs> and why should I care? So there are many, too many social networks, so why should I care about federation? What does federation mean? Sounds like federal. <laughs> federation, so it's, it's um, sort of like the idea of like independent, like fe federal, like, um, I'm trying to think how to explain it. Federated as in like you, you're you're in your own independent federal and in, federated entity, so you're by yourself, and you can, can but you can choose who you connect to instead of being on one. Like Star Wars. Yeah, well, it's it's like an like a think of it like a constellation of stars instead of like one instead of the Death Star. <laughs> so like all of these stars that can all talk to each other and connect to each other if they want to. So you set up your thing and you say I only want to talk to A, B, and C, as opposed to if you're already on one big thing, you have to talk to A, B, and C, and they can talk to you. If you're on Federated, you can choose who you talk to and who can talk to you. If you're on, if, if you're um, on something that's using that in, on a Federated server, that's part of the Activity Pub protocol, which shares all that information I talked about. There's no single owner, so you don't have to worry about um, a billionaire who posts crazy things or a company that harvests all your data. Um, there's no ads, no advertising on Mastodon and Twitter uh, or Mastodon and the Federers. Um, there's no algorithms. So there's no one recommending content to you. You choose to see what you want to see. You search out the content you want. You don't get a feed of a for you that is just garbage or harassers or people who just have no interest in what you want to, what you want to do, what you want to see. There's no data collection. So nobody is harvesting your information. All you basically provide with most of these services is an email address. And that's not connected to any other information other than just your um, IP address when you signed up. So the, basically the, the most simple things you can share, the, the base things you have to share on the internet to do anything really is an email address and an IP address, and that's all they have. Um, and one of the things that you also find with federated, with, um, in the federated universe is that these, when someone sets up a server, they set it up based on an interest of a group, as opposed to just one big place where you have to try to find everybody in like a big shopping mall you can have independent like little store sort of ideas. So there's um, instances or communities based on photography or Drupal or um, open source software, like all these sort of things that are just, the people on there only really want to talk about that sort of stuff. I mean, it's, it's we're people, so we all share other things as well, but it lets you, um, you know, be with your people, talk to the people you want. There's a very strong LGBTQ presence on um, Mastodon. Accessibility is big on there, so that you're talking to people who you really want to talk to as opposed to having to just scream into the void and hope you find somebody who wants to hear what you have to say. Um, and yeah, you can cross post your heart's content. So you connect your, you create your account on one place and then you connect it to other services. Like you, you can share the same, a text post on what would be like an Instagram or a um, YouTube or something like that. You can share a, mic, a, a blog, you can share all your information. You hit it publish once and it publishes to all these places. So you can reach a different audience across different platforms. Because not everybody might be on, um, you know, on Mastodon. They might be on something else, but you still want to share your message. So you just publish. It's the idea of um, Posse, which is publish, own, I forgot what it is. 
Publish once. Publish once. So, S-S-E. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I post to Instagram. They have choices. You want to post to Facebook too, and so it automatically posts to Instagram. Right, so it's the same similar idea, but you're posting it to these other independent agencies instead of having it to post it to... Yeah, to, to one of those. So it's just, it basically replicates a lot of the same ideas, but at the heart of it, there's no one can, no one company controlling this information. So they're not collecting, they're not making money off of you. They're not. Like Bitcoin? No, 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 no. <laughs> not like Bitcoin. It's um, it's more like, well, okay, the idea of the the, the blockchain. Yeah, I get how that. I get the connection there. But it's you're you're basically not beholden to one company that could go out of business or one company that could change all the rules or one company that could try to monetize you and make collect all your information. Does that make sense? Yeah. Publish on your own site, syndicate elsewhere. That's what POSSE stands for. Yeah. Okay, so POSSE is publish on your own site, syndicate elsewhere. So you basically can take control of your own information on the internet. Because the internet's fun. It used to be fun, right? You could post something and you could share and your people would find your blog or your post and they'd respond and it's fun. But now it's a lot more work. It's a lot more tied in. But if you take the idea of self-ownership of your own content, of what you're making, and share it out there, you can, you can control where you want to share it and who sees it, as opposed to just being sucked into some AI or whatever. Um, the other neat thing about the Federation is if you go to one of these communities, like smaller communities, and it's like, you know, I'm into Drupal right now, but really my focus is much more on photography. You can take your account and you can move all of your stuff very easily to another different community if you want to. I've done that a couple times. Um, and you don't, when you leave, all your followers come with you. They just get automatically moved to this other one. So you change your account and you get moved to somewhere else. You can move to somewhere that fits you and your, your personal choice is better. And um, your people come with you. They see all your posts. They see, you know, they, they come with you. So you're not losing followers by making like a new account if you were to do that like on Twitter or something. There are drawbacks. Um, so the, the instance, the server that you're on, is only as good as the people who moderate it. Because most of these are run by people who love, who are into this idea, and they have the resources to pay for their own server every month. Um, but if they decide that they're not going to moderate all the, the posts that people post through. What you see may be as you know may not be um, ideal, <laughs> but the stuff that comes through. Most uh, in most cases, it's I've not really seen anything where it's been a problem. Um, but you are only as good because the moderators are people, so they have to have, they have lives, they have things they have to do. But you're if you get a good instance that you really like, you're going to see you'll have a good feed of stuff to follow. Um, running a server does get expensive. Um, it can be because you're basically running like a you're running a paying for a server somewhere. I don't know the exact specs for it, um, but if someone decides they don't want to keep paying for this anymore, they could just stop and then you lose your account. I mean, you could go granted make a new account somewhere else, and that wouldn't be a big deal. And you could take your followers with you, but if someone it starts as a hobby and they lose interest in it and they don't control it anymore or they don't pay any you know pay the bills anymore, then you could um, have to switch without wanting to. Whereas, unfortunately, like a Facebook or something, that's not they're not going to shut down anytime soon. Um, Smaller communities do mean less reach. So if you're on a community that doesn't choose to talk to a lot of other communities, not a ton of people are going to see your message. If you're on one of the a bigger community like Mastodon.social, which is like the official one, um, you're going to be seen by your your posts are going to be shared and seen by a lot more people. Um, so if you're trying to market something like a product, you're going to have to. It's going to be hard because you're going to have to basically be somewhere that is connecting to as many people as possible for them to see the message because they may not. Um, but it's growing. It's one of those things. It's kind of like chicken and the egg problem. Like, okay, we have all these servers. How does it? How do we get more people by having more servers? But how do you get people have? Why do people stay on servers? Because they want to see more content. But how do you? It's, it's you know, if you don't have more people signing up, you're not going to get more more interest. So, but as it's growing, I mean, what it's, year did this start? Uh, I'm getting to that. <laughs> 20, 2016, um, 2016. It's been, it's been around. Um, development can be slow. Because it's an open source project, so sometimes that does depend on you know the, the people volunteering and working on it, um, with how much gets accomplished. Um, and open source does mean that anyone can use it. So there are services out there, um, Truth Social, um, Gab are the two that come to mind, which they took the Mastodon code and they forked it to make their own in their own platform. And they have um, some things that people may not like to see, like Gab is a lot of white supremacists, that sort of stuff. Um, that's kind of the drawback with any open source software, I guess. But um, and pretty much most non most Mastodon instances that I'm aware of don't interact with these two. Um, and there's others, of course, they don't as well. But um, and it, it can be software can be used for things that some people may find, you know, not acceptable. So this is kind of a chart of some of these um, 
compares with the other services. Like if you if you're familiar with Instagram, the Fediverse equivalent would be PixelFed. Uh, Mastodon, which I mentioned, is like Twitter or X. Um, Lemmy and Kbin are similar to Reddit. Um, Funk Whale is similar to like SoundCloud and Bandcamp. Friendica and the Diaspora there is like Facebook, and then PeerTube is like YouTube. So there's a lot of other similar ones out here, but these are things that are the closest I would find. Um, I would say to like a one-to-one -one ratio. PixelFed is very close to Instagram, which is almost identical. They actually had to kind of negotiate with Instagram to not not be sued. Um, but Mastodon is probably by far the most well-known, most used of these services. Lemmy and Kaden actually had a really big spike a few months ago when Reddit decided to start um, being jerks. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, the other ones are just this. It, 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 what you see, it will vary. And there's, there's, these are just probably the more, more common ones. There's probably another two dozen types of services that are trying to offer these same similar ideas. So joining the Fediverse, or WTF as an instance. <laughs> um, so an instance of an account. So an instance is the server your account's on, is account, your, is the server that you make your account on. So it's like an email address, basically. So your username is at whatever the instance name is. So like I said, mine is drupal.community slash at hot sauce. Um, yeah, think of like an email address. So just like you can, you can follow someone uh, who's not on your instance very easily. Um, you mentioned in your talk, yours is labyrinth.social. Yeah. So I follow her on um, my account. It's like it's just like you can email someone on AOL or email someone on Gmail. It's the same sort of idea. You can still talk to each other and follow people and stuff like that. Um, so you basically, and I'll go through this. Even if you're on one instance, you can still interact with others on other instances. So even across different platforms, using activity pub. So you, like I said, you post on Mastodon, PixelFed, Microblog, and they all you post once, and it shows up in all these different places at once. Um, and instance admins can defederate, which is basically not not allow their users to see these people from the servers that are hateful, harmful, or spammy. Um, yeah, that's basically the simplest way I can ex think to explain it. Um, so I'm going to talk about Mastodon because, like I said, it's the most widely known of these and most widely used probably at this point. Um, so I'll go over. I'm going to go over how you how it works, how you sign up for it, all that sort of stuff. Um, and you can do Mastodon on your computer or your um, phone. It's on Android, iOS, everything. It's it's um, there's official apps, there's third-party apps, there's lots of stuff out there. Um, it's joinmastodon.org, um, and they'll. It, this has actually been improved. The process of signing up has been improved. They will actually help you onboard to a new server very easily. Um, and that used to be the biggest complaint about it. It was like, how do I know where to go? Um, but they, they've really improved and streamlined the sign-up process. Um, yeah, released in 2016 by Eugene Rochko. He's, he's in Germany, and he runs as a nonprofit. Um, he doesn't take VC money. He doesn't want it to be... He doesn't want to... Um, it's really just him and a few a small staff, basically. They don't have... They're not trying to cap, um, turn us into a big profitable business. Um, so when you post something on Mastodon, it's, it's called a post, which is the equivalent of like a tweet. Um, <laughs> it used to be called toots because someone <laughs> paid him, literally paid him um, about a million dollars for for like a million dollars worth of server costs for a year to um, call it toots on Mastodon. This is when it first started. But now, so the T, the joke is, oh, I, I tooted something. But it's um, <laughs> now it's pretty much more. It, it's officially been changed back to posts. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, and this is back in from September. So, those numbers have, have fluctuated a little bit. I think they've gone up just a little bit. I think it's about 9 million active users per day across probably about um, 18,000 servers. And it's probably close to 900 million posts per day. It's, as comparison, um, Instagram or, yeah, I mean, Facebook and Twitter have, you know, 150 million users. So, it's not the same. But, that's not nothing. Nine million people a day um, actually posting or reading or using something on, on Mastodon. Um, so there's, yeah, joinmastodon.org is servers. So you find a server based on your interest and you click create an account. They will suggest the mastodon.social because that's the one that the Mastodon organization runs, but you can change that to any other ones. They, they're, I think they give you five or six wide, more like general interest servers that you can join um, that are well known, well maintained, and they, they connect to a good audience basically. Um, you basically agree to the terms of the server because every server admin can set their own rules. For instance, the Drupal dot community, which is run by one of my colleagues, um, he models his his rules on the server based on the Drupal code of conduct. So if you can be not a jerk in Drupal, you can be not a jerk on the server, and you're good. Um, 
but you just have to agree with whatever rules they post. Yes. Is that good for getting technical answers? The questions. Yeah. Um, yes and no. I mean, for Drupal specifically, I would think it's better to do like Drupal.org or the Drupal Slack channel for technical questions. But you can certainly find people. You, you can. I'll get into that. You kind of use um, hashtags. You can get people to answer questions for sure. Um, but yeah, you basically just agree to the terms, and you're, you're, you know, pick a username and your email address, and that's it. Um, yeah, Mastodon so Social is the largest, um, and Drupal.com Drupal community is the one that I'm on personally. Matteo um, Bosch, he he does the create the single directory components module in Drupal Core, um, which is really neat for front end. Um, one note. The, it, registration for Drupal community was open for anyone until about two weeks ago, and then a lot of Mastodon servers are getting spam attacks. Um, it's stopped now, but for the time being, they've closed it. They, they've, they've limited registrations on Drupal community, but it should be open up again. I would say within a week or so. But like I said, you can always just join the Mastodon social and then hop on over to another one ease, uh, later. In my slides, I'm going to have links for how you move from one server to the other and all that sort of stuff because it's it's not a hard process. Basically, you have to have an account on both places, and then you just click a button and it just migrates it. So you can really see this. This is kind of what the interface for Mastodon looks like in dark mode, because I have dark mode. Um, you can see it looks very much like Twitter. Um, this would be a post. You know, that's the post, and then there's photo previews. Um, this would be like a repost or, or a reply, um, you know, repost, favoriting. Um, that's not like a like. Um, and then there's a bookmark so you can save it. And over on the right, you have like notifications. Explore is like searching by hashtag local. Okay. And then, oh, no, I'm, getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, on the left hand side is where you just write what you want to post. Um, so, explore is popular posts based on interaction of your server, not from algorithms. So, this is stuff that a lot of people are talking about on the instance that you're on right now. So, it's kind of like the trending, but it's not coming from an algorithm, not coming from an algorithm that's recommending things. It's actually real organic interactions. Um, so local is, this is just people on the same instance that you're on, what they're talking about with each other. This is just people who've been posting stuff on that instance. So people, Drupal, the, the Drupal community people on that one only, the stuff they've been posting. Um, federated means it's a list of all of the posts from that your instance is connected to. So again, it's kind of like um, Explore, but it's not. It's about explore more about popular, like there's a lot of replies. This is just like a, a, the fire hose feed, <laughs> like a feed of just everything coming in. Um, and then direct messages, that's pretty self explanatory. Bookmarks, favorites, lists. You can make lists like you can on Twitter. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so you'll have a reply. You can reply to something here. Um, a repost or a retweet, as they call it, a retweet. And favorited, which is like likes. Now, because there's no algorithm, when you like something, that's just a way of telling someone, I like this. It doesn't change anything for how what you see and change. Nothing is recommended for you. It's just you're telling this person, I like what you did, or I like what, you know, oh, I feel so, you know, just the general response, general way social media used to be, where it's like, you you know, thumbs up or whatever. It's the same idea. Favoriting just means I like what you posted, or, I, you know, good point or whatever. Um, and then the repost, you can, um, they're just retweeting it. And you can actually set your account to hide retweets, so if someone, um, reposts these things a lot or, or boosts it, I guess is another way to think of it. Um, you don't have to see someone who just posts other people's content over and over and you can hide that. Um, yeah, and you can search and follow things by hashtag. So you just search for the Drupal hashtag and then um, in, in the search box you search that and you click that plus sign and then you'll have your feed will be populated by posts with that, that hashtag. Um, yeah, they appear in your home feed. You'll see news posts with your hashtag on your feed. So, again, this kind of goes back to the federation. So you'll see, you're not going to see everything on Mastodon about Drupal. You're going to see all the stuff about Drupal from the your serve from the the people the other servers that your server is connected to. So the federation. So if Drupal community is connected to Fossadon, which is a um, open source one, and the connected to Mastodon social, you'll see all the stuff from them. But you're not going to see it from you know Bob server if they're <laughs> if they're not connected to it. Um, How did you get to that? Sorry? How did you get to this button? Oh, if you search in the search box for, um, yeah, if you go back, oh. if you go in the, what, what the hell, I have to 
sign into Google now, apparently. Apologies. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah, so there's a search box right up here. Um, you would search for like hashtag Drupal, and then once you do that, you would see the, um, the, the plus follow sign. So one of the, the comments with Mastodon is like, how do you find people to follow? Um, so using the search, you, if you go to someone's profile, you can just click the follow button. That's me. Um, and you can also search for the um, URL for the person. So you can search. It, this is it's gotten better. Search gotten better in the last few months. Um, so I apologize for those old screenshots. But you can search for you know a hashtag. You can search for someone's username. You can even just you just know their username. You can search for that, and it'll show you suggestions for, is it this person, this person, this person? And then you just go to their profile and you click follow and then now you're seeing what they, what they have, what they're posting. The, um, you can also, you know, one of the things that um, is big with Twitter is the, you know, the verify the blue check mark. You can actually do that very easily in Mastodon. You just add a link to your own website called rel with a rel equals me attribute. Um, and then it will verify, make your, make your profile look green, basically, or whatever color it is on the, that they're using, basically verifying that, yes, this person is who they say they are, without having to pay for any extra um, stuff. Um, so yeah, one of the things I recommend for people who are just trying this out is, you know, start out following people you might know who's on there. You can follow me. I'm happy to, <laughs> I post a fair, fair amount. Um, and you can look at who I follow and follow them. But it's really a neat way to, because everybody in this, in the Mastodon community is much more focused on being a person not trying to sell a product and all that sort of stuff, you'll see a lot more human interactions. You'll find lots of neat people out there. Like I follow a, a Drupal developer in um, Nigeria. Like I never would have found that on Twitter, but he followed me, so I followed him back, and he posts some cool stuff. Um, but you can also I've also followed people who are in you know the accessibility um, space. I follow um, sports journalists because there's a lot of there's a lot of journalists on Mastodon too that don't like the, um, they, they they share their same stories like that. I have a couple of Washington Post reporters I follow. Um, and it's very easy. You just follow them, and it, you you know try them out, see what they have to say. If they if you like them, you can obviously keep following. If you don't, just unfollow them. No harm, no foul. Um, and yeah, you can favorite and re and boost and post as much things as you like because there's no algorithm tracking this. So if you really like something that everybody says, someone says, you can like it, and it's it's it keeps you from being um, sold as like a, a, a for your data being treated like a product. You can interact with people in a real real way without any sort of um, privacy you know, violations or negotiations, I guess. Um, Mastodon posts simply are 500 characters. Some servers even allow way more than that. Um, just depends on the server. Um, you don't have to pay extra for that like you did for Twitter. Um, yeah, so there is full text search. That's a lot better. Um, so what quote posts, which is kind of like um, yeah, like a, like, a re, like a retweet, but with uh, yeah, like a quote post. Um, is kind of a little in debate. The founder of Mastodon doesn't want that because that was a lot of people on Twitter dunking on someone, like, you know, retweeting it and then putting, like, oh, this person sucks, and then they're just sharing the same post. That's not built into Mastodon by default. Some servers have that, like, that feature is there in the code, but it's turned off in most places. Um, same thing with, with search is not turned off anymore, but um, quote posts used to be, it has to be kind of opt in for that to work um, for your server. Because, again, it creates a little more hostility, a little more um, friction with people in the community. That was the idea of the, behind Mastodon to like purposely not recreate that. Um, but it is also some people there's find there's value in it. So it is again a no negotiation. But yeah, there's a lot more features and things in store. Um, if you post um, images, you map, like I said, accessibility is a very big topic on Mastodon. So you want to make sure that you include all text for your images just so that people can, can read it for people with um, Disabilities, um, you know, screen readers and that sort of thing, so they can understand your images. Um, you see a lot more policing about that, but I think people kind of backed off a little bit. But I, I would recommend it just as a general practice because um, you can't do that on, on Twitter. Um, and yeah, if you don't like where you are, if you sign up at Mastodon that social, like this is way too noisy, or I don't know anybody here, or whatever, just find another account and move your you yourself to that one and um, go from there. Um, finally, because like I said, everybody is. Um, these servers are run by people, and it, you know, individuals or small companies, that sort of thing. Some companies just run their own one. Um, 
if you can financially support them, you know, chip in like five bucks here or there in a month to help them keep the, the lights on for the server, I would recommend doing it. People are doing it out of passion. It's just like supporting any other other open source project that you want to, um, you know, that you use or that you really enjoy. Um, How is that financially done? Is that something just person to person, or Oops. is there a built-in function for oh, this paying is for something? Um, it depends. Some of them use Patreon. Some of them use like the one I, the Drupal community one, uses um, Open Collective, which is like a because he's in he's in Spain, so it's a European space. But that, yeah, just fills my credit card five bucks a month, sort of thing. Um, so these are just some resources. Fediverse.party shows you all the different types of projects out there. So if you want to see something neat, um, you know all the different services, like the, what they do, how widely they're used, you know their how stable they are, all that sort of stuff. This is more like definitely on the tech side of things, but um, yeah, it's just a neat listing. This is some. Some very kind person put together a list of all of the Mastodon apps out there for iOS and Mac and PC and everything. I'll open up this spreadsheet because it's quite ridiculous. <laughs> um, it's just a Google Doc, but it tells you like how much the apps. Some a lot of apps are free, but there's some that you can pay for. It tells you all their features, what they do, um, and the you know the operating system as iOS, as Android, just some that are on the web, Linux apps, um, yeah. So this is in my, I'll, these, these speaker notes will be up on the website, you know, soon. Or, or you can just go to tinyurl.com slash mastodonfldc. Um, and then these, I won't really get into exactly, but um, this is just the, the instructions on how you move your account from one server to the other. And then also the, the activity pub module in Drupal. So this is something that um, is working to help you publish something on your Drupal site into activity pub, so it'll show. You could post something on your Drupal site, it'll show up on Mastodon or uh, Pistolpad, any of those sort of places. Um, yeah. Is there any way where you can see all the hashtags that exist? Sorry? See a list of all the hashtags that exist. It's, what it, it, yeah, there's just it's just whatever you search what I mean, it's just like anything else on Twitter or something. Like if you're searching for a hashtag, it's gonna you be see how many. Yeah, how many people are using it. It'll show you how recently the, the question was how any way to see hashtags and it's just how um, you'll see how recently they were used. I think it's like last seven days, you know, how often it's used. There's, if you like cats, the um, hashtag cats of Mastodon, people post you know, cat pictures because it's the internet. Um, there's also hashtag catterday, so you post a picture of a cat on Saturdays. Today. <laughs> yeah, today. Um, it's just fun. It, it just make I feel like this is the way that we can kind of reclaim back the, um, the open web, like let people have a better experience online and with more control and not be behoven to independent companies or you know, single entity companies sort of thing. So yeah, ta-da. Um, Questions? Yeah, so I'm trying to understand. Uh, so the, the email address is the unique ID, I guess, essentially, when you first log in, like, here's my email, and that's me. And where does that, does that get registered just to the instance, or is there a central? So, so the question is, is when you enter your email address and you create your account on an instance, like, where does that get registered? Yes, that's that's what's registered to the instance. So you're, you're picking, like, you put your email address so you can get notified, but you choose your username, obviously, like you do for any other service, and you'll put your username in there, and that's what, so you would be Drupal.community slash, you know, Bob, or whatever, or Ed Bob. Ed Bob. Um, and then that just, that becomes your username on there. And so if someone wants to search for you, they search for Drupal.community at Bob, and then they can follow you that way. So it's just like a lo little bit longer way to follow someone. Um, but you can also just, because the search is better now than it used to be, you can just search for, you know, at Hot Sauce, and you'll find me, if, I, if your server is connected my, to the Drupal.community server, which most of them, you, but the, when I talk about being connected, most servers are connected to pretty much everybody by default. They just pick and choose and, and filter it down depending on their community and what their requests are. It's not like you're gonna have one person, one server that only connects to one other server. Like, they're gonna be connected to most people because it's not, there's no fun in not talking to anybody else. Um, so it, it's more like they pare it down as opposed to just, you know, having it wide open, or, or starting building up and so, I'm mixing my metaphors. <laughs> yeah, but to answer your question, I think, yes, it's that, that's your username. And, and so if you go to create other instances, then of course you risk that, that email address, well, it's yours, but it could be used, the ID, your username can be used, like it's, there's no like, um, nothing banning someone else from you. No, correct. Yeah, there's there's nothing um, doing that other than just the usage because it's not gonna, no one's going to create at Microsoft on 16 different instances and try to maintain all of them. That's that's not that's not going to happen because you're going to see what happens is if you create one here and but you don't do anything with that one and you make another one and you have more you'll get more followers over here and they'll see someone who's searching will say oh well this Microsoft isn't 
active this one is, so they'll know which one. It's like people just are smart enough to figure it out, basically. Um, I mean, yeah, there could be impersonation, and there's the, you could reach out to the server admin, and it's just like any other social media network. Like, it's a problem. You can reach out. They'll do some filtering sort of thing. I've never really seen that being an issue, though. Um, I mean, if you have a... I mean, I, I have Hot Sauce, which I think is a fairly unique you know, username, um, or wouldn't be, would be a, a more popular username. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so you, you could pro probably find a pretty, if you have a username that you like, I mean, yeah, you could easily find it. Yeah, you know, like for you, you think that Hot Sauce 1, Hot Sauce 2, like, you part into that, like, uh, need yeah. one across, but. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I mean, there is always, there's, you can't police 100% that sort of stuff, there's always impersonators, but you're going to see that they're not, people are going to quickly realize that, okay, what he's posting is not the same thing as what he's posting, and, you know, they'll be able to figure it out. And if not, it's not going to hurt hurt your brand or anything like that. You, you know, I mean, lots of companies are on there. Lots of organizations, governments are on there, trying to because they trust it. You know. And if you want to, an instance, it's general. It's not really like, oh, you know, it's this interest, that interest, and I guess the Mastodon does socials. Yeah, it's a good place to start. The question was, if you wanted a more general interest, which one? Mastodon does social. Yes, I would say Mastodon does social. Um, there's a couple others that they'll, they'll recommend. They'll give you like a few to start to, to choose from, and those are all going to be widely used. I mean, those are the ones going to have hundreds of thousands of users on it, that sort of thing, uh, at a time. Whereas, I think the Drupal community one has like 200 use, you know, users on there. Did the people on Truth Social post in this one? No. The, the question was, can people on Truth Social and um, Gab? They, they don't, um, most, I, I can't say 100%, but most of the Mastodon servers don't interact with them. Because the one, because the software is slightly different, because they have changed the master, the original Mastodon source code, so it's a little bit harder. But also, I think Truth Social doesn't. Um, they locked it down so that you can't post to other places. Like they kind of severed that tie, so you're not going to get people from Truth Social posting on your feed, and you can't post to theirs because they want to more control it, you know, than, than keep it open. So if you if you like say I'm on Drupal community mm -hmm. first, I have to be, and, and if I want to go to Mastodon or Mastodon Social or even another one. Do I just go straight to theirs and, and create a new account, or should I somehow log into my Drupal community account and say, oh no, I want to duplicate this on this? Account? So yeah, so the question is, is, how do you move an account? So yeah, you would you would take your first account, you know, a Drupal.community account, and then you would, you, you that's the one you're on right now, but you want to move it. So if you want to move to Mastodon.social, you go to Mastodon.social, create a new account there, and then in Mastodon.social you say, I want to move another account in. And so what they'll do is they'll connect to the Drupal community one, and it'll just pull in your posts and your followers to the new one, and then you can go in. And then once that's done, it'll delete the Drupal community one. If I okay, if I want to move, if you move, it deletes the old one. Yeah. If I want to just maintain both, then yeah, you can do that too. You just log in new and yeah, post it both posts. Yeah, you can yeah. So easily maintain. I mean, I'm I'm run the Drupal the Drupal Camp Mastodon you know account, and I'm my own personal one. I'm also run the my company one now apparently. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can maintain multiple accounts all at once. And there's there's really great apps um, for it. If you're on iOS, I recommend Ivory, which is a really good app. It's not free, it's like 25 bucks for a year, but it's by, if you used Twitter before, they were the people who created the um, Tweetbot app. They created their own, it's, it's, so it's a beautiful interface, easy to interact with, and it's very intuitive buttons, better than that web interface. There's lots of really great, there's also a really great free one called Ice Cubes, which does the same sort of thing, for, again, for iOS. Um, that one's also open source, so there's a lot of, um, you know, development, active de development there. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you, everybody.